Hey everyone, this podcast is part of Story Mode, the podcast network of Gamefully Unemployed. You can support us and gain access to other great exclusive podcasts like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman by heading over to patreon.com slash gamefully unemployed. That's patreon.com slash g-a-m-e-f-u-l-l-y unemployed, which is spelled like it sounds. Halbkast mit Tom Reimann an David Bell. Welcome to episode of Hypecast! Hypecast! Oh, God, it's the show where we get hyped about stuff and things. I'm your co-host, Tom Ryman. I'm your other co-host, David Bell. And who are you? I'm Abe Epperson. Nice to meet you. Returning oh. champion! Yeah, I'm mm-hmm. the, I'm, I think I'm the winner, right? He's the you guys Ken were saying James right of, before of you recorded Hypecast, that yeah. you had to have me back because mm-hmm. I'm so good at this. Mm-hmm. You, so, you defeated all of our other Hypecast guests. Well, mm-hmm. hopefully I... Can you have bested the <laughs> perform to the hype huh mm-hmm. already killing it already killing it. already killing it yeah. yeah no that's that's yeah it's Good like job. it's like it was scripted yeah how you been abe what have you been up to since the last <sighs> time we spoke to you i made the terrible decision today to eat too much cheese Ooh. Mm-hmm. So now it's I'm a, all, it's it's a, a, an affliction we're all familiar with. Yeah. 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 So now I'm just like, I don't know, just there's just imagine so much cheese in my belly. Just, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. slowly mm-hmm. digesting. That's mm-hmm. that's what we're talking about right now. And I'm just lethargic, but also hype in a cheese way. Mm-hmm. Nice. Hey, that's you're where just, I'm you're at. just you're just loaded with cheese. Mm, yeah, all the oils are gonna have to come out somewhere. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking mm. about. <laughs> can I get? Can I tell you guys about what's inside of me? Yeah, if you want. I I had a bottle of brainwash carbonated drink. Now, if you're familiar with Hot Topic in like the '90s, this was always on the shelf. I have a, never heard of this before no. in my life. It's like an Edge Lord soda mm-hmm. that has like a scullied crossbones. Uh, go ahead and Google it. You'd always see it in Hot Topic. When I was a teenager, I'd grab a bottle off the shelf. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has like a kind of a jalapeno, like spicy taste. Um, you know, it's like black label filled with like Edge Lord slogans on it. Hell yeah! It sounds um, it sounds like a real piece of shit. Yeah, I I ordered one off the internet, mm-hmm. and it got here, and I drank it uh, for nostalgia's sake. And I gotta say, it's actually kind of a good soda. I don't mind this Edge Lord soda, and mm-hmm. I might have to get more. Oh wow. yeah, that's what, like when I got a case of Surge. Um, right. And point of fact, I'm gonna have to track down uh, sometime during or after recording, but most likely during, uh, mm-hmm. possibly right now, uh, think, whether or not I can get myself another case of Surge. I think it's oh, I'm sure honestly a social affliction at this point. Like I do not approve of all of the nostalgic soda stuff sodas and what's i don't know there's like i don't know we're gonna probably bring back tab and i don't know well they, they tab's been stuff. back baby. yeah tab's been back it's that I kind an, of shit I've, man i have an <laughs> argument for you're you're saying you don't understand it i'm i guess i understand it uh because everything's just about making money i'm just like do we need it and like how well, much i think actual pleasure do you get out of it i think that Soda is disgusting. Okay. It's disgusting. And we really you really only realize that about soda if you have a lot of one type of soda. Right. Mm-hmm. Like when I worked at a movie theater and I could have all the Coke I wanted, you mm-hmm. know? After a while you're like, This is disgusting. This is a disgusting liquid that I keep drinking. Mm-hmm. And so I think our nostalgia for sodas really come from the fact that we're just sick of the sodas we drink. And new nostalgic sodas, like, I don't know, there's an appeal there. Like, when I drink a moxie, I'm like, holy shit, I haven't had a moxie in a while. And you drink it, you're like, oh, this is delicious. But that's mainly because I, my body hasn't, like, acclimated to the, f- the the fact that it's just a different 
flavor of sugary water. So you're arguing that variety is what motivates this, is like you know, why it fills soda. a this fills a hole in the in the, in, the, in the industry or the market. I think, that's bullshit I think that's, though, because you have like nine million soda options to begin yeah. with. Why do you need you that much variety of soda? Mm-hmm. Have well, a Dr. I think it's Pepper. variety and nostalgia. I think there's definitely yeah. a nostalgia in that the sodas that we used to drink feel like they taste better in our memory. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then you have them and you're like, oh, right, Orbits sucked. Uh, but, but like, I don't know. We just, I think soda is better in memory than it ever is when you're actually having it. I don't know, mm-hmm. man. It's just, it just bothers me. Have you ever me. had it a soda that felt me, refreshed cause... by it? Yes. Really? Yeah, no, like when I'm really thirsty. Oh, yeah, like if I was dying in the desert, mm-hmm. sure. It's delicious, man. I don't know what, I don't know what your problem is. I don't know. I don't know why you're being weird about this. <laughs> I I'm not the weird one. Abe's the weird one. Sure. I'm the weird one for not wanting to give obvious cash grabs to places like Nestle and Frito Lay or whoever makes soda. No, no, no. I get I get that aspect of it. Mm-hmm. I'm just all the I same understand shit. the nostalgia yeah. for it. Maybe I'm just a grump. I'm just a grumpy puss. You are a grump. That's yeah. true. It's mm-hmm. right it's right there in, in most of your screen names. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Old grumpy puss Abe. Yep. Mm-hmm. That that's where we're at. That's yep. where we're at. At thirty five. <laughs> that's why that's why we asked you back, is because you're yeah. so grumpy. I'm so yeah, yeah god damn it. Grumpy radio high. is the best radio. God damn, dude. But Hampton. still, don't don't fall for it, people. Don't fall for it. Don't be sheeple. Mm-hmm. Don't be sheeple. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm bringing to the table. I'm not a sheeple, though. I'm drinking this really cool soda. Sure you aren't, Dave. It says it says on the side of it, you want we want you for life. Uh, this oh says boy, that, gets they, rid. They I'm could, not done. I'm not done. They couldn't make good on that promise. Yeah, there's another one. Gets rid of all the garbage they've been dumping in your mind. Good not Lord. brainwash carbonated drink. It's extreme. It's a drink that makes you think. It's dangerous because it's got a skull on it. Oh mm-hmm. yeah. Now I see the hot topic. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, no, it's the skull that really sells it. Yeah, yeah. One of my, there's a quote <clears throat> somewhere that talks about when the iPhone came out and the way that they marketed it, which is much like how they marketed Apple computers in like, you know, with the famous eight, 1984 ad, is like to make the biggest like kind of like the the quote that goes like the biggest trick the devil ever played is you know yada yada yada. Um, it's so funny to me that they would pitch the iPhone in its like first PR ad marketing kind of situation. It was pushing this vi- vision that iPhones were revolutionary. Think yeah. about that for a second. Revolutionary. <laughs> That's just some bullshit is all I'm saying. Fucking iPhones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. We all well, know, I'm, by the I'm, way, I'm, everyone I'm... knows where this story, as in me, my story from the next, like, until I die, where this story is going. <laughs> I'm probably going to end up living in a bunker. Because <laughs> of all these opinions. <laughs> what? Because because Apple's gonna go after you. Because I'm just like and you're gonna like, have to I'm go like in a bunker. A, I'm an angry old man yelling to corporations, "Stay off my lawn!" <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You and your sodas and your iPhones. They're it's taking like, yeah, no, your souls. <laughs> all this stuff is all this stuff rules, man. I don't know why you're mad. At <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. You can't believe that. I mean. I mean sodas gadgets yeah that stuff's pretty fucking sweet i'm not against sodas i guess or gadgets yeah i'm gonna have to side with tom on this one all right that's fine gadgets are dope man yeah gadgets are pretty dope live in your fucking brave new world man (laughs) like a gadget that if you sucked on it it'd make you'd turn your spit into soda what are you talking Uh, about (laughs) I'm just combining soda and let's, gadgets. You know what? One like we should probably start. Let's, let's, no, let's start the episode. We've we've gone far enough. Like, like right. it's a water this world has gone Dave? far enough. Like a yeah, like water world ape. <laughs> um, what what are we doing here? What's going on? What are, well, how, this is, is this how we spend our lives? Yeah, no, uh, this, we is, got to this is just producers. what we get to do now. <laughs> All right, let's let's thank some producers here. Mm-hmm. Um, we got a new one here. We got Phaedrus. Thank you very much, Phaedrus, for Woo! becoming a podcast 
or specifically a Hypecast producer. Thank you. Um, also, thank you to Ryan, the Silly Money Goose. Uh, always a pleasure. Chester's Prophet, thank you very much. Thank you to definitely not Guillermo del Toro. Uh, okay. Thank you to Brian, who Tom knows. Thank you. I do. Thank you to Doc, wear a mask, you fucks, Garby. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you to Bob Grenville. Thank you to Steven. Just sure steven thank you to down home chicken Picot. it's a mononym yeah <laughs> yeah thank you to han to me the confused cyborg thank you to asking seven. Oh man Tom. let me jump in here uh thanks to hey fuck you i'm happy ed yeah good for you happy ed yeah uh thanks to i was born to stare Thank you. Thank you to Dracula the Bus Driving Vampire. Thank you. Thank you to Tiger George Pratt Thompson. Raindrops keep falling on my head. Nice. Thank you to Chloe Rice. Thank you. Thank you to Dan Hackroyd. Thank you. Thank you to the Kool-Aid Man says the only unity we need is the homogenous mixture of flavor inside me. Viva la resistance! Woo! Thank you to E.T. the Extravagant Terrestrial. Thank you. Thank you to Cody Johnston's Time Machine Noise. Mm-hmm. 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 Thank you to Pete Vorpagel. Thank you. And thank you to Glitoris. 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 Thank you. Um, we had a couple of Super Bowl trailers this week. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I made it a sort of a sandwich. Uh-huh. If you notice the Super Bowl. A, a delicious Super sandwich. Bowl sandwich, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So one of one one bun, one piece of the bread here mm-hmm. is the the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yeah. Mm. Super Bowl trailer. It's coming to Disney Plus in March. Mm. Yeah. Abe, we were talking about this with um, WandaVision, mm-hmm. and would you agree about this, Tom? It really feels like this and WandaVision were never meant to be what Marvel intended as like their introduction into Phase 4. Mm-hmm. That's right. Um, yeah. I mean, like, it was, I we were th- definitely supposed to already have Black Widow at this point. Um, yeah, and I don't think they meant to have this much hype on, or this much, like, reliance on these two shows uh no, pr- i mean probably not no i it, yeah. no, nobody intended to have to uh batten down the hatches around their streaming services just to stay afloat like i think yeah D- disney had an investor call earlier today uh that we're recording this which is on thursday uh and i think their profit for the fourth quarter was like 29 million. Oh wow and for disney that is abysmal <laughs> Yeah, that's yeah. a little itty bitty. <laughs> like their their profit for the pre I think the the same quarter the previous year was over a billion. Yeah. Um and it's because everything mm-hmm. shut down. They're not making any movies, their parks aren't open, you know, and and Disney has a lot of expenses cuz you know, they just spent 70 yeah. billion to buy 20th someone's, Century Fox. Someone's got to feed Mickey. He eats so much radiation. <laughs> Mickey <laughs> Mickey is the like the 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 cavernous maw at the center of the universe Mm -hmm. like no matter what you cram into his fanged orifice it will never be enough that's right yep (laughs) mickey consumes Uh, all it is all (laughs) soon we will all be mickey because yeah. his yeah. gravitational Ideally. pull will spaghettify <laughs> all of our ass. <laughs> he will just become the universe. Yeah, I become Death um, Mickey. <laughs> I bring that up just because I feel like we're craving this stuff, mm-hmm. and I'm not. For I don't sure. know what it, I, I'm trying to have a. I'm not. I'm trying not to get too excited about this show. I mean, uh, for people who are bummed about WandaVision, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is going to be the exact MCU template that everybody's used to and loves. Yes, it's the opposite. Yeah, for sure. It's the opposite of of, of weird, uh, just weird craziness. Um, this is yeah. this is just a Marvel movie broken up into a TV show. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what it seems like. Yeah. Uh, which I'm fine right. with. I think that that's you know lo- a way to do long form, and Wonder sure. Vision shows that they can kind of do it. Although, like we talked about, that you know, we've all talked about kind of. I can't. Uh, I, I'm not sure if they've been on stream, but like, and maybe on Hypecast. But just the idea that uh, they are slow. They do do the pitfalls of like the mystery box and stuff, but. You know, sometimes their movies are getting too long and because it's like, well, we have to show the arc, which is like an hour and a half. And then also we have to seed 
all this stuff that's happening in the next movie and the next movie and introduce these characters who aren't really as important to the movie you're watching, but will become important. And they're having to do all this stuff and kind of like pass it between the, you know, the properties of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So it's like they're getting pretty bloated and it's like, ah, too much to focus on. I kind of like TVs, you know, well, I'm just going to watch an episode and keep it in my head. Um, right. That's something to, you know, I'm glad that. Yeah, they're addressing. I think it's at this stage in Marvel, I think the thing that you're talking about is going to be less of a problem because they've spent 10 years introducing us to all these characters. So you can just kind of have like in WandaVision, you can have Kat Dennings just show back up and we already know who she is. So we don't need to like go off on a, on a tangent and explain. We also don't need, we also don't need to know who she is in the context of WandaVision. Not really. No. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's stuff like that might not, that might not have been, like yeah that, that might not know. have been the best example but I'm just I was just talking about in terms of like with Falcon and the Winter Soldier we can pretty much just jump right in and it's not like mm-hmm. yeah we don't need to worry necessarily about seeding all of these mm-hmm. I mean there, there's definitely other things that they want to seed but it, it it's kind of like like when the Simpsons gets to like season 17 uh, it can just pull on its it's yeah. A cast of like 250 named that's, characters. That's really the thing about Marvel. The cinematic universe is, it just at this point feels like one long TV show. Yeah. Yeah. That's what they're uh, going that, for. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And some of the episodes are in theaters, some mm-hmm. aren't. Uh, and so, like, the, the switch to the streaming, it doesn't really, the only change is not seeing it in on the big screen and WandaVision was clearly designed yeah, for uh, watching on TV. One of the things I know you're not as keen on it, but I I'm really digging WandaVision and that's one of the things I like well, about it is that it's really, it no, it, it's taking advantage of the format it's in. Yeah. I only have one criticism of WandaVision, which is that I felt like the first three episodes just could have been condensed into one I don't or know. maybe two. I, I don't uh, know. It just I, felt like they were stretching a little bit at first, but I've been enjoying it. I'm not thrilled by it, but I don't feel like that's kind of what I was saying is that like so everybody's watching it mm-hmm. and I feel like it wasn't meant to be something everybody loves either. Mm-hmm. It was meant to be a supplemental story, not we're bringing us into phase four. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It wasn't meant to be the big thing because that's the thing is I feel like Marvel is gearing up to drop fantastic four and x-men and all this stuff and wandavision and <laughs> oh, yeah. um, I mean, falcon you... and the winter soldier well i don't want to spoil anything but, right yeah, yeah yeah uh like they clearly are like parts of that but mm-hmm. they weren't it wasn't supposed to be this grand stage to introduce that stuff so the, the it feels like they're limping into phase four with these shows <sighs> that are i i don't want to call them underwhelming because i do think wandavision should be it's creative and shit like this should be encouraged i just don't think they they thought of themselves like it, it i don't know it just seems a little rough how many uh structurally structurally how many sh- structurally of stretching though how many episodes what? speaking of like because you're talking about how one vision and stuff and just like how these things how long these things are or how satisfying they're how many uh episodes do you think they can get in falcon and bucky before they kiss um God, hopefully it happens right away and how many episodes I'm hoping, of just kissing i'm hoping it's fade up their kissing oh you want see same thing like Not even like fade up, hard you cut. just want to cut to the chase yep i i yep. kind of like this interaction that they have like they're clearly doing like a legolas and gimli thing yeah mm-hmm, right? and y- you know um I, I really, I'm good on Marvel, I guess, or whoever did this, because when I first heard Falcon and Winter Soldier were, were doing a thing, I like, like, oh, I, the boring my, ones. My, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was just like, oh, why? And so they, in like one of the Captain Americas or Civil War, they have like a scene in a car. It's Civil where War. It's yeah. like, <laughs> where it's like, move your seat. You yep. move your seat. And m- someone honed in and they're like, just do that for the entire show. show. Yeah. Yep. And it's like, <laughs> all right. Mm-hmm. Because that's all they have. Mm-hmm. That's all that's right. they have. Uh, so it's going to so be a will the, they, won't yeah, the they, couple. and then yeah. it's going to be over. 
because they're going to yep. start kissing. Mm-hmm. And that will be the end of that season, right? God, yes. I, Mooch. What a... God, what a... They better do it. <laughs> they better do they're it. They're not going to. They're but not they better going do to. It. But it's just such a shame. No, they won't I kiss, but they should kiss. I want to see it. Yeah. I mean, it's it's the same thing. Like when I see the trailers for Kong versus Godzilla, I'm like, mm-hmm. they need oh to kiss. Oh my god, what they need to do more than kiss. I yeah. want to see them fucking raw dogging on a stadium. Yep. Yeah. Oh man, just destroying fucking Minneapolis. <laughs> yeah. With, with their yeah, yeah, with yeah. their fuck thunder. <laughs> oh, perfect. Um, I got you. Anyways, got... that's that's the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Well, one last thing. Speaking of fuck thunder, um. D- Marvel punishes relationships, doesn't it? Like in the Marvel universe. What do you mean? Who who's in a relationship? What characters are in a relationship in the Marvel universe? Well, they show that relationships are hard to. They they dip into the superheroes as like can't yeah. have personal relationships, and so they punish them. Yes. Yeah, they're trying to do the will they won't they all the time because it's really just well, Wanda and um, Wanda and Wanda and Vision. Vision, Tony and Pepper, but Tony's dead. Exactly, they um, punished them. Cap, Tony and Pepper Cap and Peggy Carter finally got to be together. Yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. By the way, when Wanda and Vision got together, that must have been a thing, right? Like around the office, like they must have. So, people would have gone to Wanda and they're like, "So you're, uh, fucking you're fucking the robot, the robot yeah. huh?" And she's <laughs> What's like, that yeah, like? Yeah. It's got to be like Data, right? Like when when mm-hmm. uh, that lady dated Data. I think she just like wrote over the reality, and everyone just was like, "Oh, that sounds good." Yeah. I just feel like I would ask about his dick all the time, every day. Mm-hmm. I would need, like, to, I would I need, need to, know. to know what the dick situation was. Yeah. And also, like, wouldn't Tony and um, and Bruce kind of know what the dick situation was? Because they built him. I mean, he's kind of sentient, so he could have probably made his own dick. That's true. I don't so think don't they know. built the android. Didn't they have to steal the android? Didn't Ultron steal the android from, uh, he, like, a Chinese he, scientist? Oh, I don't know. They like they built it in that stupid, that healing machine that, that never comes back up again. Mm-hmm. That can heal. They like put the stone in there. That's lucky that like, like Jarvis. Like they like, got a white guy robot. You know, for mm-hmm. Jarvis, like they'd have to be oh, like yeah. that would be weird, wouldn't it? <laughs> if it was like a lady, <laughs> I guess it wouldn't be weird. But like it would be a you. They would address <laughs> it, right? Wait, what? Well, just the idea that yeah, the, voice, what about. <laughs> the voice and the robot are like, feel like, yeah, that, that'll that scans. That's, that sounds he like looks Paul like his voice. Ben, yeah. Well, here's the, here's the weird thing is in, in the uh, end game, when they go back in time, you see Jarvis as a butler and I'm pretty sure it's the same actor. Uh, the... So like. What are the odds that the robot looks like the guy that the voice of Jarvis was inspired by? Right. Um, I don't know. He. It. I, I don't know, man. I don't know where any of this is going. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to know about Vision's dick. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's fair. No, that's evergreen. We always, we always, all of us, want to know about Vision's dick. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What's going mm-hmm. on with that? Yeah. Um. All right. You want to go to the next trailer? Hmm. This is yesterday. Uh, isn't this a Jim Carrey movie? Yeah, yeah. essentially. <laughs> yeah, this is a Yes Man. A is Netflix... the name of that movie. It, yes Man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. This trailer has the song that's in all the trailers. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, it's uh, it's fucking it's um, it's Owl City. It's Owl City and yeah. uh, uh, Carly Rae Jepsen. Hell yeah. <laughs> so it's like really? it's that it's that owl city motherfucker singing about fireflies or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> God fucking damn it. Uh this is this is Jennifer Garner can't say no to her kids. Mm. They have a yes day, a day where they can only say yes to their kids. And my and like it's like a str- they like the dad is like, Oh guys, I can't do yes day no more and the and the and the like the kids are like betrayed and it's Treated like serious moment, and it's well, like they're it's, your kids. In the trailer, just tell them what to do. Right, like in the trailer, he he's saying like he's like tapping out of yes day because he's like physically not able to do it anymore. Yeah, <laughs> right. His, and they're like, you his, never keep your promises. His middle aged body is breaking yeah, down. So, <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck is happening? And they're like, I I I don't think we're cool anymore. If I was young and I met myself now, I wouldn't. And it's like you're a fucking adult. 
Don't open your windows in the goddamn car wash, you fucking like rich ass. Right, yeah, that's gonna honkies, destroy like, yeah. your fucking car. Right, I wonder but they clearly if balance don't care is gonna be it. the they answer money. by the end of What's it. That? I wonder if balance bet is gonna be the answer by the end of it. Like, yeah. I wonder yeah, if it's gonna be like yes sometimes yes in a while. and sometimes no. Yeah, I'm a comic. It's just like can you. Can you imagine, like, the it's, fucking privilege of just being like, you know what, we're going to say yes yeah, to our it's, kids it's, all day. This premise is real horseshit. It's like, ho- it's, it's, yeah. you would never, ever, 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 ever do this. It's goblin no. shit, man. If, yeah. <laughs> if you were, also, if you were, I just rather, I just spent time thinking, like, during the whole trailer, because I turned off the trailer within, like, like less than a minute because <laughs> like, sure. I knew where it was going. I think it's the first time I've guested this podcast that I actually turned a trailer off. So fuck you guys. But also mm-hmm. if you were their kids, what would be the first thing you'd do? Because they seem like you mentioned it, Dave, they're going through a car wash with the windows down. They're playing paintball. Uh, yeah. Like these are the things that the kids were like, let's make our parents say yes to paint. Right. What kind they of always- fucking burgeoning serial killers are they raising that they're like, I want to go to the car wash with the windows. Yeah, that's open. Some yeah. like, up shit, that's your big thing. I'll that's tell you the, the first thing, thing you I ask would- for on the day. Nobody can say no. Maybe the parents right. do have a problem. First, <laughs> first thing that I would ask is PS5, please, mm-hmm. because they're clearly wealthy enough. I'm sure these kids already have it. Uh, yeah, no. Each like, one, of, would, each one of them has a PS5. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> what if one of one? Of, see, I want one of the kids just to be like totally, just totally, absolutely straight faced. Just be like, I want to rob a bank. Right, or like, I want yeah. to hunt the most dangerous game. Yeah, I want to buy a gun. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Buy me a gun, Dad. I want to watch. Have, I want to oh, watch no. a man die. Yeah, yeah. They have a scene where they show her getting arrested, and I assume it's for killing somebody. No, right? it's going to be this vanilla comedy shit where it's like they, yeah, they were getting a pillow fight in a Target. Or, oh probably. yeah, they like hit, they they like something fucking, like that. They hit a giraffe in the nuts at the zoo yeah, or something, exactly. and now she's got to go to yeah. jail. Yeah, it's going to be some right into a stupid cop asshole car. shit like that. Yeah. yeah, Paul Blart was there and was like, no, no, no. Yeah. God damn Fucking it. yes day. <laughs> Fucking yes day. <laughs> Paul Blart was there weeping about how lonely he is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Remember when we watched is. that fucking movie and that's a scene that happened? That yeah, is a dude. scene. That how is lonely a, that is. is a, how much of a failure he is. <laughs> Stuff that's absolutely true. Like, that's the thing. It's, it's, it, it's more haunting because you know it in your heart that it's like, yeah, you deserve that cry, <laughs> Paul Blart. Just such an unexpected direction for Paul Blart Mall Cop yeah. to take. <laughs> you fake it till you make it, baby. God, fuck that movie. Keep those oh, tears man. inside. Um, fuck uh, this movie, too. Let's move on. Fuck this movie? Yeah, let's yeah, move let's, on. Let's say, let's say no to Yes Day. Mm-hmm. Um, Let's move on to happily. It's Dave. I guarantee you that's going to be one of the re- the title of one of the reviews written about yesterday. Oh yeah, it should just be the word no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else. Just no. No, with That'd like be eight so O's. Good. Be yeah. So good. No. It would be like the shit sandwich. Uh, it would be perfect. <laughs> uh, so this made me more angry than yesterday. Uh, happily did. Yeah, I blame both. Really, of you. I have. I'm curious. Like this movie seemed like the premise seemed interesting. No, no, hell no. no? Okay. That's exactly right. the wrong thing. All right. So how okay. is this a concept? <laughs> a very happy couple. Everyone mm-hmm. hates that they're so happy. So the yeah. fucking government or some shadow organization tries to get them to take a shot that forced them really that will make them like everyone else. They literally say that. And yes. then apparently they murder him and then spend the rest of the movie acting like they're not happy. Also, at one point, they're locked in a house, not sure how that's going to happen, and are afraid that someone's watching them. One of the wives or girlfriends tries to hit on Joel McHale in order to break up, the, once again, the very happy marriage. Like, what? So, this is, just feels like a like stream of consciousness nonsense to me. How is this I have a concept? theory. Mm-hmm. By the way, this is from the writer of Skip Trace, the Johnny Knoxville, Jackie Chan movie. Yes. Um, uh, my theory is that 
this there's they just didn't know how to advertise this one because mm-hmm. I can't fucking tell what's going on in this trailer. It was just like this doesn't not, this is like a fever dream. Like you said, like it, it felt almost like the lobster. Another movie I hate, although people love that's like was trying to put this like make this commentary on relationships, but by putting it in a really literal world. Um, yeah, like a, a world okay. that's just like. With the lobster. Very literally symbolizes the thing. And mm. this is like when the, the weird, mysterious guy came and he's like, you're too happy as a couple. I'm going to have to. That's weird. I was like, what the weird fuck Weird, mysterious is this? guy. Stephen Root, sir. Stephen, Stephen Root, Root. Which I'm um, um, amazing. But like. Who might have been with, sent by the friends. It's the, unclear. Uh, yeah. The I don't know. The whole. And I, like downsizing and these. T- at least those are metaphors that like the strut, like the high concept of like the world that we live in for the movie are structurally designed to like teach us something, right? Mm-hmm. This is just a very happy couple. No one thought no one thought of any kind of con- high concept. They're just like what if you just couldn't be happy? Like what if that was like ordained? And it was just like right, what that's is- 1984, like the simplest shit that like we do for metaphor in like social commentary, but- you know, like they're not even trying. Yeah. I don't but know. That's- I don't know that I'm I don't feel like I can make that judgment just by the trailer. Yeah. Well, that's, that's why fair. I they feel can... like there's something more here. That's fair. It can um, absolutely be that. This is technically a co- it's it's labeled as a comedy crime romance. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm just wondering if there's just more to it than we're seeing in the trailer. Because, like for example, they k- kill Stephen Root in the trailer. I'm not sure why you would ever need to do that. He's just a man who came into your house. Maybe. They, and he's like, I'm going to give you shots. And you can just say no. Maybe. I, they think should, uh, I, I, I assume they weren't allowed to say no and he wasn't going to leave until they took the drugs. Right. Right. And then you just call the cops. Well, that's, I mean, unless I, we I don't know what the, the rules cops. of the world that's are. That's what I mean is did he pr- take out a gun? Yeah. What is going on? This trailer doesn't explain why they would feel the need to kill a It's absolutely uh, a that because that. otherwise why would it be in the movie? Because it's like just some guy comes and says you need to take these shots and they're like, no. Like the, he has to have some he power. Must be, he must have some power. Right. But we don't have that explained to us in this world. Well, I think it's a or scene. if this is a dystopian world where the government steps in. It has to be. Um, he's I mean, described, it's, it's... He's, de- he's described in the synopsis as a mysterious stranger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, weird. So maybe he's blackmailing them. I don't know. Why? What, what is this I don't drug... know. I, this but trailer is fucking is nuts. That the way that it's designed says that like if you don't do these beats there is no movie because otherwise these people would be like no go about our day continue to stay extremely happy having sex three times a day you know kind of sh- all this shit that they list off in the trailer um right so there ha- there's coercion and so if that's true what's the motivation for the coercion i believe it in like I don't know, like if a high concept, shitty, even shitty high concept, like sci fi's, or, you know, like I mentioned, down, uh, downsizing, or you mentioned lobster, or like in time, or something like that, there's a, an actual device, or there is a, you know, written metaphorical device that causes this. Right. This is just so simple. It's just like they have to. Why? Because I don't know, the government, I guess. You know, like taxes. Yeah, yeah, you know, like taxes, but you have like happiness taxes. Yeah, you gotta like put like a shot. Come like, on, man, you're like, not even yeah, trying. You gotta, take, you gotta, you gotta take this goo that makes you not like your wife so much anymore. I fucking hate Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, we can move on. Cool. All right. Um. Yeah, my point is that I just don't know from this trailer. Spe- and on that same subject, this next I- trailer behind it, her eyes. Also, no fucking idea. No fucking idea what this is. This is yeah. a British show that's coming to Netflix, I think, this week. Right. By the uh, way, almost all of these, except like that we've listed so far, they're all like books or like branded options already, and that's pretty surprising to me because this one's a yeah. From what I gathered, and you tell me if you guys if you found it any different, it's ba- about a lady who works for a man as like i guess a personal assistant she ends up fucking both members of that unhappy marriage and it turns mm-hmm. into some kind of manipulous a uh, manipulative dangerous game situation where there's like that's lies what and it intrigue. seems like yeah right 
Are there dream crimes? Maybe. It's Maybe. unclear. Okay. Because it felt they, like there were dream crimes. Well, and then they, yeah, they keep talking about what's going on behind your eyes and people who have dreams like me. And then the, they do look at the fucking corny ass, slowed down, dramatic version of Mr. Sandman, which is like, <clears throat> yeah. Jesus Christ, guys. Yeah, I got, I, I got, I, re- I got wafts of dream crimes. I literally the week on like I think the last uh, hypecast, I was talking about how. Literally, this trope is becoming so old that they're not even just pick, they're just picking familiar songs and just giving it the Hunger Games song treatment of it. I, like they're not even I, doing apt songs anymore. Yeah, maybe it relates, but like, uh, particularly there's dream crimes involved, then the song would relate. But like, I was just sitting there uh, watching this trailer. Uh, I had long uh, ago given up trying to understand what it was actually about. Um, and was just focusing on the song and I was just sitting there thinking about like who would just sit and listen to these moody covers of these cornball songs. Mm. Like, can you imagine that? Can you imagine going over to hang out? You're like, like driving to work or something. Or you yeah, we're just going or over like... to somebody's house to hang out and they're mm-hmm. like, you know, like people are showing up and then they just, they put on a CD of this shit. Yeah. I bet it's, I bet it's Jared Leto. I don't oh, know. I mean, yeah, I just that's think Jared Leto evergreen. Would that's <laughs> that's that that could be the response to literally any question. <laughs> is true. I bet it's yeah. I bet it's Jared Leto. Um, like, just, but yeah, this yeah. I just couldn't get over. It's so moody and nonsensical. This song, like Mr. Sandman in particular, like it is. I mean, it's a it's a pop song from the fifties. It's like right. the cheesiest lyrics. Yeah, it's sitting there trying to be all dramatic while this lady is singing about bring me the cutest guy I've ever seen. Right? I yeah, mean, exactly. it worked exactly. Like, this Jesus worked exactly Christ. once, right? Um, with the sweet dreams. Yeah, Manson. that's the one I was going to mention. So they can't use that one. They certainly can't use it now. Mm-mm. Um, it, it, well, but I mean, like, yeah, it was. That, that's like the only time it ever worked, right? Well, because Sweet it's Dreams was already, I mean, it's its like synth, uh, yeah. it's its its a little industrial. It was already kind of a goth song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was already kind of a creepy song, yeah. like the original song. Like he didn't change, um, he didn't change the key, he just slowed it down a little bit. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying that it, it that's it, mm. right? I, I, I'm sure there's other examples of it working, mm-hmm. um, but yeah. Mr. Sandman, for example, worked really well in Halloween H two O, just using the regular song. Oh yeah, like, just well, use yeah. the regular song. Yeah, like uh, Wonderful World and Good Morning Vietnam. Yeah, people love doing that shit. Yeah, uh, I mean, when we the, go back far covers. enough, this is uh, like what what was it two thousand two thousand one? Uh, Donnie Darko with uh, Gary Jules cover of Mad World. Right? Yeah, like that's the same concept. A cover, right? That's I hate moody that song, but you're right. Pretty happy right. song. No, that does count. Yeah, the song is still like it doesn't change. I don't. It that version of the song doesn't really change the song because it's already a little slow and it's, it's an extremely moody song. It's a little slow. It's kind of the original is kind of ironic and it's like upbeatness, and this just goes full. Yeah, Full dream Bjork style, but yeah, this is kind of what. This is why the opposite. Like, sorry, this not so much movies, but when Johnny Cash did Thirteen and Hurt, mm-hmm. he did a dancing song and a Nine Inch Nails, and everybody was like, "Oh yeah, that's way better." Mm-hmm. You goth fucks, you mm-hmm. didn't have to do any of that mm-hmm. goth shit. Just have like an old old cowboy sing it. But mm-hmm. this is almost um, exclusively like s- sweetener pads over random percussion with a breathy female singer like mm-hmm. they're mm-hmm. cookie cutter at this point yeah it's terrible slowed way down and yeah. usually adjusted to like a minor key yeah yeah and like i guess nothing against the artist doing it but it does now feel like it's like three people and they're doing it just for trailers yeah <laughs> right. uh, I, I think there's even a sketch about that of like sure. a couple who does all the slow covers <laughs> there must be yeah. there yeah, must be yeah. uh, sounds like a SNL right there I don't think it's SNL I, I saw it on the internet someone will probably link it 
uh, after listening to this. Mm-hmm. It's not the same. All I'm thinking of is the Key and Peele sketch where Jordan Peele was playing Ray Parker Jr. And it's like, catch all of the <laughs> other theme songs I wrote. <laughs> right. oh, it's, it's very fucking funny. <laughs> Anyway, I I don't know about this behind her eyes. I don't is, I don't care. I'm not gonna watch this. Yeah, it's, fuck Hollywood. <laughs> it's some gobbledygook thriller <laughs> a series. Week. It's a series, so I'm definitely not watching it. Yeah. Um. This yeah. Is... It's some. Uh, it's uh, it's British, so it's probably been out. Like it probably came out last year in the UK. So you could you could probably like read a review and and figure out whether yeah. or not it's worth your time. But this trailer is garbage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. 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 <laughs> Bummer week, guys. Bummer yeah. trailer week. Well, this last because, one, uh, this last well, one made me fucking laugh. Okay, oh, I mean, yeah, yeah this, this one, one rules. Is delightful for different <laughs> reasons. Oh, it's the best. Uh, the other side of the sandwich, old, old, old. <laughs> great great name for stuff just oh. already, already. <laughs> i saw old this and is, i was like that's a stupid name for a movie old. and then the second thing i shot i saw was brought to you by m night Shyamalan. And yeah, I was like yeah. this Shyamalan. is going and then, too far and then it's the fact that it's about people who age fast and then it's just old it's just called old <laughs> it's just called old it's like a prank old it's a beautiful yeah, prank i like, take it back this is the best you. movie the name of this movie is hollywood old. is not broken <laughs> I love this Benjamin Button shit, dude. <laughs> Hell yeah. Oh, my God. And uh, so the first thing that popped out was it was like M. Night Shyamalan does a movie about a mysterious island. And it was like, oh, good. Mysterious island. That's that's fucking perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, yeah. And so they the people show up, right? They're like stranded. They have kids. And then their kid gets old. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. dude. Both, and the, then kid, both the kids get old. old. They get yeah. old as fuck. Yeah. It's like if they called the happening wind, mm-hmm. which they it's should like have. if which they, they called have. the happening the happening. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! This shit is this, awesome, uh, and I bet they're gonna like actually grasp for the metaphor too, like most horror movies oh do. No. Which is that it's like sometimes like lives get away from you, and you gotta be okay yep. with it and just roll with the punches, mm-hmm. man. And it's gotta, gotta be, be more yep. present. Oh. This what the funny thing is um this movie is based on a graphic novel called Sandcastle. Hmm. It's a better name. A much a better, better title. Much better name because it makes <laughs> yeah. you think of youth Old. and it's it's a beach. Yeah. It's yeah. In, it's impermanence, you yeah. know, it's uh, I don't know, it's it's a way better title, but Shamon was mm-hmm. like fuck it. Old. This is called Old. This is Old <laughs> as He called it Oh. It's, he fucking called it old. It's so called you know, old. Uh, you know how all this works? <laughs> Movies take their they, they take their their theme or they take their their concept and they stretch it to the farthest it can go to create the most amount of conflict. So you know there's going to be like an old ass just like the oldest oldest dust like kid in this movie, right? Yeah, yeah. it's just going to be a fucking skeleton. He's going to just um without Yeah. Without looking, uh, uh, ho- hopefully you don't already know. What do you think the tagline is? Fuck. Get, I get, get ready to right. get old. Um. <laughs> get ready to be old as shit. <laughs> yeah, it's got to be some quote, like famous quote. Tagline about and p- poster. I want you to also think what the poster would be. Oh, okay. I know what the poster is. It just okay. looks like the be- Danny Boyle's The Beach, right? No, the poster is an hourglass. Yeah, oh. instead it's a of bunch sand, of, it's, it's people. people. Yeah. And Time is not on your side. Next to it, oh, you're so it's close. Very close. The tagline is "It's only a matter of time." God, God, God damn it! God old. damn you, M. Night Shyamalan. Fucking take my money. I'm gonna. I, I oh, I'm gonna watch this guy. I'm gonna watch thing. the yeah. shit out of this. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. If I see he an knows. old ass baby, I'm <laughs> gonna fucking know. shit. He does know. Look at him. Look Hell at yeah. any photograph of M Night Shyamalan. He knows. Yeah. He, he knows you're he gonna knows watch this goddamn anymore. movie. Old. <laughs> you, you, you maniac! You <laughs> named your <laughs> fucking movie it old. old. You lazy he it old. maniac. <laughs> you could have called Why it hourglass. The fuck? <laughs> 
Sanchez. Would you call it old? That's like the placeholder title on the on the dock while you're writing it, and then you're yeah. like, obviously, we're gonna come up with a better title than old. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, oh man, Nick uh, of time. I can't wait to watch this movie. <laughs> no, yeah, old fucking beach. <laughs> this uh, this f- was filmed uh, during the pandemic. Like this whole oh. We're starting to this see whole them. deal That's came great. together pretty much during the pandemic, if I remember correctly, or like right before it is when it started. Well, I didn't hear anything in the news about it, so they must have done it right, and it probably didn't have that is many snafus. Is this in theaters? Uh, it's scheduled to be because it's supposed to come out in uh, July, so they're hoping. We, it's possible. We talked about this with Jason. It's very possible this might be the one, right? This is around July. Everybody might get their shots and old will make a billion dollars and they'll be like, we need four more olds. Yes, dude. I mean, they'll, more just, olds, they'll, just give, yes. they'll just give Knight more money. Yeah. Just, no, but I, I, if if this spins off into like yeah, sequels, franchise, it yeah. would make me so Aww. happy. Oh, hell the yeah. Old the old franchise. Mm-hmm. Because it's just the thing that makes the money at the time and executives and have like, no idea what's going on. And imagine it reinvigorates M. Shyamalan's uh, career. Yeah. You know, like yeah. he's back, Fuck baby. Because <laughs> of, <laughs> of old. Because of old. The movie about aging called Old. Mm-hmm. Fuck. Fuck. I hope this comes <laughs> true. It's it's <laughs> man, he like he was just back. Like five years yeah. like five years ago. We people were like, He's back. Because it was he had the visit and then split. And people were like, Yeah, M Knight's back. And they did yeah. glass. <laughs> they did glass and we're like, never mind. Never right. mind. We spoke too soon. <laughs> yeah. Um <clears throat> anyway. Oh, Christ. <laughs> I want to make can't a believe film it's called, called obscurity. Old. old. <laughs> Just fuck you. That's like what that's what the movie's title is, is fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> God oh, damn! Shit! Oh, well, I, lo- I love this movie. Yeah, that's that's uh, we we went out with a bang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude. Oh, <laughs> old, old, old. Oh. Bang, dude. Hell yeah! Oh shit! Um. All right. Well, we want to talk about news stories, but first we got some more patrons to thank. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'll start us off. Thank you to thanks for having Jason Pargin on. Here's twenty five bucks. Thank Yee. you very much. Thank you to the Midnight Patron. What patrons at midnight? Thank you. Yee. Thank you to Exploding Runes. Thank Yee. you to Andrew. Andrew. How? How? Thank you to Vincent. Thank you to Rev M D. Thank you to John Munez. Thank you to Wavy Rancheros. Uh, let me jump in here. Uh, thank you to Doctor DNA. Thank you. Thank you to Lauren Gucci. Thank you. Thank you to James Rainey. Thank you. Thank you to Bootler Bulison. Thank you. Thanks to Grumblebee. Grumblebee. Thank you to Tux. Tux, thank you. Thank you to Shepard Mulch Diggums. Thank you. And thank you to Norm from Cheers. Thank you. Norm. <clears throat> okay, so uh, like 18, for... 18 different news stories broke uh, last night at like 7 o'clock. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, did I miss any from this No, list? I know. It's, it, you got them. You got the okay. big ones, yeah. You got the big ones, yeah. Let's it's pretty, talk about... This is a pretty uh, intense list, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's talk about them Mandalorian news. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, with, uh, what's her name? Uh, Gina Carano. Yes. Hell um, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, get like, fired. I like that you asked what's her name when it's clearly written on the doc that we're all looking I, at. I was I was like down in the doc. Ah. Sorry. <laughs> I, I was looking somewhere else and then I had to scroll up. Yeah, you typed um, this. Yeah. Gina Carano <laughs> got 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 fired or was she even fired or was it just that she was done? Because the release I saw was Lucasfilm being like, she is no longer a part of they the just, Mandalorian. They, yeah, they're like, she doesn't work for Lucasfilm and we have no plans to work with her in the future, basically. I'm guessing they fired her. Or I'm well, guessing they for season three, they're like, maybe she'll be back and then now they're like, nah. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah. she's done this shit for a while so it could have been either. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. This the timing was very suspect, but um, I think they may have been trying to like stealth fire, 
Uh, I feel like it would have right. been a bigger deal because, you know, like she would have come out and said, like, they fired me and like, you know, this is cancel culture. Um, <clears throat> so my guess is that it was probably the, you know, the but where the when right. the bow breaks, you know, kind of thing like that. Or, yeah. Um, yeah, from, it's uh, it's gonna be tough though because they angered Ted Cruz, oh, and he right. has his finger on the youth. Yeah, he does. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he nobody really knows does. youth culture like Ted Cruz. Yeah, so he leads the youth uh, with his with his opinion, with his right. weird, sad beard. Yeah, he can't grow, so he's gonna be <laughs> mad about the Mandalorian. Uh huh. A show he definitely watches. It seems yeah. like from all the shit that she said, though. Uh, Disney, we needed to find out what the Disney threshold was. And apparently, that's the Holocaust. <laughs> it's the Holocaust. Yeah, yeah that now, checks out. From, from what, I've, what I've heard, and this is not confirmed, but from what I've heard, they've been looking basically for a reason since right. she yeah. since she started tweeting some that buck wild horse shit last yeah. year. Yeah, she, she's been a real <laughs> sorbo yeah. Yeah. Uh, for a while yeah. now. No, Anti-BLM. Like, that's this thing I, the, the, I love the like they cancel us because we're conservative it's like no it's because you're unhinged yeah it's online. because you believe in violent uh dangerous conspiracy theories there was didn't someone do that it was like a tweet or a meme where it's like they canceled us for being conservative and like oh they canceled you for like uh wanting small government and like lower taxes like no the other things yeah exactly. like which other things oh y you know the things yeah <laughs> where it's like yeah it's never it's not being a conservative it's saying like shitty things yeah it's that's comparing what it is. being a republican to being jewish in the holocaust she can go yeah. fuck herself yeah. it's it's uh, it's dumb shit don't wear a mask shit Mm -hmm. it's just like yeah no you you sound <laughs> like a maniac i'm, I'm sorry protesters right. no, yeah you sound you you sound unhinged and you're yeah what do you expect I and guess? and the and the the thing i mean uh, apart from just how dumb and frustrating everything he says is the thing that struck me in ted cruz's tweet was like yeah so that she was a character that little girls looked up to so obviously star wars had to cancel her and i'm like yes because if little kids are looking up to her, she's saying some dangerous horse shit, man. So, yeah, yes, exactly. get her out of there. <clears throat> also, oh. what a weird thing to say. Like, obviously, you know how Star Wars always cancels the people that kids look up to. Like, I don't know what he meant by of course mm -hmm. they had to. It's just like, no. He doesn't, he doesn't you even know, know what he means. He's one of the dumbest no, motherfuckers no. alive. <laughs> he is very dumb. So. Here's my... One of my, uh, one of my favorite tweets was a uh, side-by-side -side comparison of just a... Sh uh, just a shrill account of some kind saying like uh, Disney shows that they, you know, the m more current one Disney shows, you know, that they're, you know, cancel culture is alive and well, you know, like I, ha I will be standing with Gina kind of stuff. And then from the same account, like a year or two ago <laughs> or, or like a year ago. And it's just like, what's up with M Mandalorian? We don't need all these female heroes. This SGW, SGW yeah. shit is bullshit. I'm just like, ah, you yeah. play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. Yeah, you get stupid prizes. Yeah. No, the, the, there was a fucking incredible article from on the hard times, uh, which is like an onion type site. If you haven't yeah. read it, where it was like, woman finds novel new way to be hated by Star Wars fans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A, a, exactly. Apart from just being a woman <laughs> yeah. or something. Yeah. That's fucking great. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's again, it's it's a pretty simple story. I'm yeah. looking forward to never seeing uh, her again. Yeah. yeah. And it's also like, like they don't... Uh, I never want to be on the side of corporations, but it was just like, they don't owe her anything, you know, like no. she's, she's an actor and a, like, again, a role model. And if, if they're being shitty online for whatever reason they decide, then yeah, I mean, you're they working, could be like, look, yeah. we're, we're, we're done with you. Yeah. yeah I saw a post on Reddit where they're like, they focus on this shit, but they don't focus on the fact that they like, they don't boycott uh, China for human rights violations. Good job, Disney. And I was just like, man, things can be more than one thing. Everyone yeah. Yeah, can also be bad. This weird. It's fine. Stop complaining it, about it. It's a. It's the other thing where it's like she'll be fine. And like most examples, when they're like, look at cancel culture go too far. They fired Kevin Hart from the Oscars, and it's like, yeah, the Oscars. That thing only one person like hosts per year. 
They're they're picky. Yeah, they're picky. It's not like the, he said some, I believe, transphobic things or homophobic he's got, he's things. He's got a long so, history of yeah, that. But, yeah. And so they were like, you know, this prestigious award show, uh, we're just not going to have you. And then he said, ah, shucks, I'll go be in the next Fast and Furious or Hobbs and Shaw. And it's like, these people, they'll be fine. She's, It's a Star Wars show. It's, also not, it's like the biggest show. It's and not, it's like, yeah, maybe they have standards, you know? Yeah. Um, I forget who said it, but it's not cancel culture. It's consequence culture, you know? Yeah. So, like, let's just allow the consequences to do. Yeah, Disney, a horrible corporation that has uh, violations of its own uh, and hates yeah, unions Disney and all these things you can say truthfully about They're terrible. Disney has to make a decision yeah. on whether or not this other horrible individual is a part of their you know group. That's what's happening here. It's not a left versus right situation a cultural like uh litmus test it's none of that shit why are you reading into it that way it is merely a situation where one person went too far and said some bullshit because she's dumb and kind of livid and and kind of just a piece of shit uh and a company that thrives on being creating stuff for children doesn't want that that's all we're watching that's it being as vanilla as possible yeah exactly and because they yeah. want to make money uh yeah yeah we can talk about the, any number of things in this fucking time bomb that is this situation but don't i'm just tired of like people having hot takes that are essentially like well what's this like why aren't they focusing on this shit or what's that you're playing you're playing a spin game that I just have no interest in. And I'm hoping that more and more people will just have less interest because that's how you make it go away. You snuff out that, that kind of fire by not giving any oxygen to it. So yeah. Yeah. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Yep. Yeah. I don't know, man. Yeah. It's, 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 yeah. Uh, ideally we'd just be able to like, yeah, no, that makes sense. And then go on with our lives. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah. No, you, you, uh, yeah, you play stupid games, you get stupid prizes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, all right. Well, then let's move on mm -hmm. uh, to what's going on with Judd Apatow. Oh, yeah. I can't wait for his next two hour and 40 minute long comedy. Jesus. He's making a movie um, that takes place uh, during the pandemic. It's about making a movie during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, what a cast, though. It's, uh, yeah, that's the only reason I wanted to bring it up is because David Duchovny's in it. Um, <laughs> okay, so you focused on David Duchovny. <laughs> Yeah, it it's based off the making of the next Jurassic World, yeah. which has been like well, held hostage from the pandemic. They've been desperately trying to make this movie right. that, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, will be bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's the third uh, Jurassic World movie and the yeah. sixth Jurassic Park movie. Yeah, yeah. And they're, they're trying so hard to make it. And so um, I guess um, David Duchovny is playing uh, j the, the the character that's inspired by Jeff Goldblum. Yes. Which makes so much sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guys, what if it fucking rules and this movie's premise, like the whole setup, which is us collectively laughing at the fact that movies are bad, a movie about movies being bad, mm -hmm. just falls right. on its face. It was so... Yeah. I don't know why I would be rooting for Jurassic World. It's possible. World. I think... <laughs> But yeah, no, I, this movie, I mean, this movie has a decent cast. It's got uh, Karen Pedro Gillen, Pascal is in Pedro Pascal, he's in fucking everything right now. He's in <laughs> everything. Look, <laughs> yeah. uh, we're, we'll, we'll get into this, but like, I'm not against him. I'm not sure why he's in everything. <laughs> Karen Gillian. Uh, because people really like him and he's become very visible over the last year. Yeah, he's great. He is great. I get it. Um, but man... <laughs> He's he's it was he's like an explosion. He's Keegan hot right Michael now. Key, Peter Serafinowicz. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, the woman who played the daughter of Borat is in it. Yes, daughter Maria, of Borat. Uh, yes. Bakalova. Bakalova. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's this is like the first project she's taken since Borat. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, I yeah. I just I think I don't. Yeah, I like this cast, but it's like I don't. I don't know how interesting a movie about people waiting around in a hotel to be able to film a movie is going to be. 
Well, I think it's just going to be a Judd Apatow film. Yeah, it's going to be it's going li- to be three hours of lightly edited yeah, improv. And I'm exactly. Force. Well, right. I feel like I already know what the movie is, but that's here's, like, yeah, here's here's what it comes down to for me, and why I need to see this movie and I'm excited for it, is the words David Duchovny plus the word improv uh, <laughs> makes me so happy. What are frogs? Like, here's the thing about David Duchovny is I don't think he's a he's a particularly funny guy. Mm-mm. No, he's but not. He's a confident he try, guy. But he, he tries thinks, to be. <laughs> he's but very he confident. Thinks he's hilarious. Yeah, and uh, I'm pretty sure. And confidence with like improvers is like it's a you need to have it. But also, exactly. like, there's this aspect that they teach you in improv, which is called playing to your intelligence. And I'm not saying that doesn't mean that you have to. People usually misidentify that as like, okay, so you're dumb, so just do silly dumb jokes. No, that's no, not what no, they mean. Yeah. They mean like you you play as fast as you can, uh, and you also play to the intelligence of the character that you're playing. Um, and it's just like he is confident, and I don't think he understands that element of improv. So you you put him in a room with someone like Leslie Mann or Peter Serafinowicz, and they're just going to eat him up. <laughs> like it's going to be yeah. a constant like destruction. It will be a one-sided. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be incredible. I can't wait it's for gonna that. It's going to be Keegan Michael Key. It's going to be. Come on. Oh yeah. <laughs> like you're, you're it, out of your. your but that's. Oh yeah. Gonna no, have it's like going to. It's going to be a lot of his scene in Zoolander. I exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think. Or uh, that scene in Evolution where he moons the camera. It's going to be a lot of like him right. doing like. He might do physical comedy. That's the best. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like I'm. I'm saying that I think it goes all the way around into being funny again with him because I do yes. find him funny to watch. Kind of like in like in these movies, a LeBron James is funny kind of way. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I, you know that the people who are have less of a career where it's about being funny are going to you know like the Tom Cruises in Tropic Thunder. I'm guessing that Pedro Pascal is going to play like probably the uh executive who's gonna chris push pratt. i was thinking the chris pratt yeah oh, you, oh okay yeah maybe he's he's like uh, i just think that this is gonna be the behind the scenes right so they're gonna get a lot of bread and butter out of like how making a movie works and how how silly and horrible these yeah. people are like tropic thunder did and so you're gonna have a character who's gonna be like uh, someone has covid and someone's going to be like, no, we need to stop and do this thing. Probably our protagonist is going to fight for, you know, not just falling in line. But there's going to be an executive right. who says, essentially, uh, we're going to cheat and lie. We got to make the movie because it's money, baby. It's money. Yeah, I'm also like, I, I know don't... there's supposed to be, I guess there's, I guess there's supposed to be drama between the Jeff Goldblum character and the Laura Dern character. Um because w- weren't they? Uh, didn't they get married briefly? Jeff Goldblum and Laura Dern. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I don't know. I'm gonna look that up so I'm not uh, out well, of my mind here. The uh, thing I wanted to point out is I I don't I'm not like looking forward to watching a comedy about the pandemic. If that makes sense. Sure. Like I'm not looking. Oh, no. I'm not looking wanna... forward to uh, somebody walk up. Oh, somebody's got COVID again. And it's like womp womp, and like it's a bunch of hijinks. It's like no, like uh, half a million people are dead, and the number keeps going up. <clears throat> in yeah, this they're gonna. Country. They're gonna try to do it tastefully, yes. but you know, comedy is always gonna try to push it, uh, especially in Apatow. But my guess is that at the end of it, the heart will be in Apatow fashion a very centrist message that everyone should just do their part, and we'll all be okay, and that's all. Yeah, uh, and there'll be no okay, so like for the record, active like no, we're gonna change things, and you guys suck. Yeah, you'll feel that, <laughs> but no, it's not actually gonna happen. <laughs> for the record, Jeff Goldblum and Laura Dern started dating at right after Jurassic Park. They met on Jurassic cool. Park. They dated for a few years, and I, I I heard one of the like the plots is that it's like awkward that they see each other again, which I'm assuming that's just like actually what's going on on the set of Jurassic World. Mm-hmm. Sure. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It, yeah, I I'm gonna mute everything that is during the pandemic plus movie. Like, I don't want any of that. No, I don't. I don't want a single pandemic movie. It, yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna kind of feel like. I mean, God, we everyone copies like Ocean's Eleven. You know, like all especially yeah. the Julia Roberts bits, um, the American Sweethearts as well. Like, we love that oh. shit. We want you eat it. We love America's sweetheart. The self, 
the looking back at Hollywood culture by Hollywood is both one of the things that seems to work. Like it's endearing because there's jokes that, because they, they write what they know, but it's one of the more insufferable aspects uh, of that. Yeah. Like, cause they keep doing it again cause it works. And so I can't really defend that it doesn't, but it is insufferable because it's like, Oh yeah, yeah. we're so interesting that making movies is like on par <laughs> with like being a renegade cop or something like that. And uh, guess what? They're not wrong about it because we choose to make heroes out of movies, you know, like makers and, oh, yeah. and celebrities and that's nonsense. But there you go. Um, pandemic it had movie. It had to happen is my take. Might yeah. as well get it out of the way. Yeah. Um, all right. Next, next story here is Pedro Pascal is going to play Joel. In the Last of Us series. Yep. Also, that's fine. Lady Mormont, the from Game of Thrones. Yeah, from, yeah, from Game of Thrones. There's so two Game of Thrones people are playing Joel and Ellie. Yep. Oh. Yep. And there's yeah, that works specifically both characters in Game of Thrones that get crushed to death, which I found yes interesting <laughs> by big hands. You're right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Crushed to death while killing a giant. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Don't know why. <laughs> There's really only the two, <laughs> so yeah, pretty much, yeah. So it's it's weird, but you know what? Game of Thrones is still a golden standard in TV for darkness. I still argue that, uh, sure, because of like the moral, like presumptions that it makes. It says like all people are evil, more or less, or like you know Cersei's mm-hmm. thing about like a me- a me- you know what being a uh, queen or king is is like ripping it. Everyone is like ripping you're like ripping out weeds uh, and that that's all the people are trying to strangle you. Um, I think it's good fit, honestly, for the tone of the last of us because yeah. there's, it's such a dark dreary kind of nihilistic uh, approach. That's like the ad hoc situation with the last of us. And then we get these little, you know, mm-hmm. signatures of light that come and say, Oh, that's humanity fighting back. Um, and that's kind of what the- game of Thrones was. Yeah, this is the thing. Pedro Pascal has he's in everything. Um and it's like, man, he's in everything. I don't disagree with any of the casting choices though. Mm-hmm. Uh like everything he's in, I'm like, yeah, so far so good. That, yeah. That works really well. I'm glad yeah. that he's going to be um, in comedy. I'm glad he was in Wonder Woman 80, 84, you know. Yeah. The uh the interesting thing, one of the interesting things about his casting in The Last of Us is um the he's he, the Last of Us uh, got him in uh, first position, mm. which means uh, for people listening who probably haven't heard that term before, it basically yeah. means that The Last of Us has dibs on Pedro Pascal. Essentially, if there's a scheduling conflict with anything else he's doing, they paid a premium. Uh, Last of Us has first dibs, and that includes Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. Wow, which so, he probably. That makes sense. That's yes. one of the things, and you sometimes I like this is a little inside baseball, but sometimes it is uh, an active decision by the actor, who we know that Pascal had had problems with Mandalorian in general, um, and he didn't want to stay. Uh, he, I think he might be leaving, right? Or he hasn't been signed on. Uh, I don't think he's been s- signed. Wait, we haven't heard of Mandalorian? Yeah, it's, it's like they're in a standing pat kind yeah. of th- situation, standing operation. Um, I mean, all he really has to do with the Mandalorian is come the d- for the episode in which he takes mm-hmm. off his mask. Precisely. So that's yeah. that's the that's exactly. a big. Uh, there were rumors. They don't that even he's, need him to do the voice. Like that's, well, that's the I voice mean, is, he's is like he does it all in a, He does it all in a voice recording booth. Like the vast. Yeah, no, I'm saying that they don't even they could have someone else do that voice. Like that, it's not a unique voice. All he has to do is be the face when the mask comes off. Uh, uh, like. That's bare minimum. If he was really into it, he could be on set every day and be in the Mandalorian right. outfit, and maybe he is. But he, um, it could no, he's be low definitely not. They didn't in his life. Yeah, that's absolutely true. <laughs> they, yeah. absolutely they didn't true. even cast him until a lot of the first season had already been filmed. But yeah. my guess is that who is the Mandalorian? What do you mean? Uh, it's a bunch. It's a bunch of different people. It's just a bunch. It's like Michael Myers oh, or well, like any other. It's, it's it's his it's his double. Sometimes it's stunt guys yeah. a lot. Uh, and sometimes it's him. 
Yeah, it's it's yeah, that makes right. sense. Uh, mm-hmm. I just didn't know if they had like one main person. No. My guess um, is that whoever owns Last of Us rights gave money to Disney for this to happen. In other words, though. Yeah. And it was oh, probably maybe. one of the things that Pedro Pascal wanted. So he wanted to, to move to first position so that he could at any time take other projects. Um, it had been, yeah, it was, there's a rumor that he was like not loving his time on The Mandalorian. Uh, and perhaps Gina Carano getting fired has something to do with that. Right. Um, yeah. There was also. Yeah, no, she kept telling him that he doesn't need to wear that mask on set. Yeah. She was giving him shit for wearing the, the mask all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, a good joke, guys. It's a, it's a solid fine joke. Uh-huh. It's a solid joke. It's a solid perfectly fine joke. Gag. Yeah, but yeah, there was, it, it had also, like, people had also heard that, like, like it was known that he was about to become available for, like, a series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is probably not the only thing he looked at. It's definitely not, like, the first person that came to mind. I, for this role i've heard um i don't know I, well i i i know it's probably accurate because of who i heard it from but i won't say who i heard it from just in case that affects that person um yeah 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 the people that they i, I i've heard it was offered to matthew mcconaughey oh that's terrible because <laughs> they had don't also they had also offered it to mahershal ali or at least I don't know if they offered it to him, but he, it, it, it had it had passed in front of him and or his people. <clears throat> yeah, I don't like either. I of could those. see that. I honestly don't because there's a grizzledness yeah. to Joel that is like, I don't know. Maybe maybe a there's a grizzledness that I guess neither of them have. They neither Matthew they McConaughey it has it a little more, mm, but uh, you, mm, I don't know. I think he's probably the worst choice of this. I mean, and they're not like they're workable, but like I think Pedro Pascal is already. I actually thought they were gonna go Joel Edgerton. Yeah, that one really like why wouldn't they? That he's it's it's made for him. Right. He's already but, named Joel. Yeah. Yeah. They, his name, yeah. Exactly. Just be yourself. And I know he has a lot of trouble with that. You know, when right. they name him something but else, like, uh, he, what was the he freaks out. It comes at night or whatever. Like that felt yep. really. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Like he'd already played that role. Yeah, it's silent grizzled. Yeah. It's it's uh and that's why Pedro Pascal, having seen the movie Prospect, yes. it's like oh, okay. Yep. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, I can see that's that. Right. I, a pay, a pay, a pay, um Prospect, I was kept almost saying his name. Mm. Uh that was almost certainly a touchstone right. in, yeah, in his casting. Because well, it, yeah, it's about sure. it's about him helping an orphaned child. Right. Yeah. An orphaned teenage girl. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, um well, final story here. Um, so Adam Wingard is directing a face-off sequel. He sure is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's not a, a not a remake, a sequel. That doesn't mean we're going to get Nicolas Cage and John Travolta they in it. They would be cowards uh, if they didn't recast Travolta they, and Cage. They, well, I assume it's about someone else facing off with no. the same technology. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, that's my assumption, is that it's like we got to face off again. But like... Bring just get just get Nicolas Cage and John Travolta from the grave. Just have them Honestly, fucking yeah. oozing around the film. Just old ass face uh, off, dude. Yeah, I don't give a shit that Nicolas Cage's character dead. is dead. I don't care. <laughs> I know, and they all. Yeah, I don't care. I mean, they both have had work done, so it's not really that big of a stretch, to be honest. They're like, yeah. mm-hmm. Their faces already They look... both look like they've been face-off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're wearing someone else's face. Uh, yeah. But, <laughs> good lord. I don't know. I don't. Who would you cast? I don't even know what the story is, but if you had, let's oh, say, well, the... not a sequel, but you have to do a re, uh, reboot. This I is... mean, I, I have to, my uh, Collider co-worker, Vinny Mancuso, uh, pitched this earlier, but I <laughs> agree with it with all of my heart and soul. Robert Pattinson and Tom Hardy. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> that would just be oh. a fucking madhouse. That's that's insane. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, you sit them down and they're like, look, uh, one one rule, don't be afraid to do a voice. Yeah. yeah don't exactly. be afraid to do a voice. Uh, what are you guys Like, what kind of voice can change about? scene to scene? Yeah. I don't care. I like that you're in this scenario you're pitching that either Robert Pattinson or Tom Hardy would ask before doing a voice. <laughs> yeah. yeah I mean, you don't true. really have control. 
All right. This is a, <laughs> now just, here's they a question. Just show up with a fucking voice. Uh, is like Tom Hardy director. is he a Nicolas Cage type? Like, is he gonna get older and be a Nicolas Cage? Is that what? His, I don't know. Because you could see that, right? You oh, could yeah. see him just being in like direct to DVD, just totally batshit movies. Yeah. Uh, in his like older years, sure. Um, yeah, he can go. He that's the thing is that because he's a wild card, I really see all yeah. options on the table. Because he could also become God a Daniel damn. Day Lewis, and just like come out sure. once in a while and do something amazing that we just go, "Yep, he's the yeah. best actor." Right? He's like yeah. top two. <laughs> Depends on how he likes to spend his money, really. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, who knows? Yeah, I don't know, who man. Who knows? I. Either that or, again, John Travolta and Nicolas Cage. Yeah. I mean, that would be amazing. That's the obvious Because neither of them give a shit anymore. <laughs> they do it. And they, they do it for cheap. You, yeah, and if you think they'd give a shit for a face-off sequel, they would not. Right. It would be a nightmare. It would be, so, it would be so glorious. Directing them. Like, having to direct those two bastards <laughs> on set. Oh, Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want that more than anything. And this is one of those projects where it's like, who even cares what it is? Like the writing of this, so easy. They've been so easy. I I've heard uh, that they've been trying to get this off the ground for the past couple of years. So, yeah, I. My fear is that it'll be like the Point Break remake or any of those where it'll just or the RoboCop where it'll just be like vanilla and it might and like it boring. might like like Point Break they need, started out like I don't think RoboCop ever well no RoboCop actually has a pretty sweet cast um, yeah yeah but like with Point Break started out having like kind of an interesting cast and then everybody dropped out of it one by yeah. one <laughs> so it's like all right why we, why the fuck are we even doing this mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But this, it's like it, in like the whole the reason we like Face Off is because it. Uh, I mean, it took itself seriously, but we didn't take it seriously. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it takes itself kind of seriously. It's hard. It's hard to tell. It takes itself it's not, seriously, it's but not, it's funny. It's not complete. Like I don't. I don't think it doesn't take it so. Yeah, I don't it think, knows what it is. Yeah, I don't think John Woo really takes himself if like you watch his movies. I don't know. Like, have you there's seen a certain, the interviews with him where he talks he about how he thinks Face Off could really happen? I mean, that's just him being incredible. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, t- I'm think talking he does. about the, the think, composition of the film itself. I think he does. Oh. I think he just isn't 100 percent on. Uh, 100% on being able to see what like the American public is able to go. That is, I'm absolutely one like down with that. Like he's gonna get some of it right, but like I don't think he truly has his finger on the pulse. And I think Dan's yeah. right about that. Like, yeah, I, like Face Off and Broken Arrow, like those movies, they're not. They don't, I don't. They don't feel like they're one hundred percent in on the joke, but they also don't feel like they're unaware of the joke. True. They're light. There's there's jokes in it, like in Face Off when he's like this ridiculous chin when he's talking about his right, face and yeah. stuff like that. Like there's jokes, but I don't know if they fully understand how fucking wild it is right. that, for example, at the end of the movie, Nicolas Cage just brings home a child like it's a dog mm-hmm. that he found. Oh yeah, that he doesn't get. Like yeah, it's <laughs> how and like they do the weird face touchy thing. Yeah, and, like, that that fucking lunacy that the yeah. that the Archer family apparently does. Yeah, I don't think the, he they understand that he, aspect, and it's yeah. like that's a big part of Face Off. For I me. think he understands that it's disruptive, but I don't know if he knows how disruptive or how. Right. embracing it is the absolute clear answer if he understands the intelligence of that decision uh because right. it's absolutely the right decision uh so the hard thing with, with a face-off sequel it's like how do you harness you that gotta again? find unhinged maniacs again yeah and i mm-hmm. i think you gotta take it as seriously as you can while allowing it to go a little off the rails it can't be ironic yeah yeah, yeah, it can't know itself, but at the same time, if they just play it straight, which often like RoboCop, you know, or not RoboCop, yeah. uh, Total Recall, like often these ones, they do that. No, I think I think RoboCop was accurate as too. Well. Like that's okay. 
Like that's yeah. one of that movie's they took problems. It too, too seriously, <laughs> and they're like, just let him shoot someone so in the dick. Come on. Let's yeah, it's like, this. have you not seen RoboCop? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I, I really actually like the Patterson, uh, Pattinson, and Pattinson, uh, Tom Hardy. Tom yeah, I mean, Hardy. That's perfect. That's perfect. Uh, you know what? You give, fuck it. You have the obvious roles. Get, you have the obvious. You know roles. what? Um. Or. Or give one of the, one of them to Willem Dafoe. Just do a lighthouse. Yeah, oh, just the other the, the yeah. other one I saw that I really liked was Michael Shannon and Willem Dafoe. Eh. Wait, what is it? Michael Shannon and Willem Dafoe. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's like some yeah. Willem Dafoe's too old, I uh, think, to be honest. There were other actors considered, by the way, for uh, the original. Um. One of them was Harrison Ford and Michael Douglas. Mm-hmm. And folks, they're still around. I don't see why we can't do that. Uh, that film doesn't work. That film do, no, it doesn't takes do, like a, do like a perfect murder with them switching their faces. God. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Mike, but don't, I kind of want to see Harrison Ford and Michael you know, Douglas face off. I want you to be... kill my wife. I don't want to kill your wife. <laughs> God damn! And then they switch faces. And then they switch faces. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want. Only, again, it's it's modern them, so they're both like they're wicked both low energy. Fuck. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. Bear with me. All right, all right. Just he- hear me out. Hear me out. Uh, mm-hmm. Tommy Lee Jones and Jim Carrey. Go on. <laughs> of course, <laughs> of course. Perfect. <laughs> Holy shit! It really. They need to make. Take my Ten face of these. off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Imagine. There just needs to be. Oh. <laughs> they just, just Tommy Lee Jones that doing film. a Jim Carrey impression. Yeah, Imagine yeah. That. Oh God, and not being into it at all. Oh. Yeah, he's like, I just, come here, just lean in, lean in real quick, son. Lean in real quick, son. <laughs> I need to ask you a few questions. Yes. Yes. <laughs> do, woo. Do not go oh, in there. Fuck. I love me. Yeah. I love me some of that. Give oh, me man. more face off. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah. I want two face offs a year, minimum. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what you call it. That's what you call the they Tommy to Lee be... Jones and Jim Carrey one. You call it two face off. Two face off. Two face off. Oh. Mm-hmm. Oh, hell yeah i just i just blew this case wide open <laughs> dude it's over dude. <laughs> it's over <laughs> adam Wingard listen we could talk for the up. next 45 minutes about could, yeah. <laughs> recasting yeah. a face off different combinations <laughs> yeah <laughs> so i'm gonna have to move us on but this has been incredible right. <laughs> final final one um um fuck it. why did i just forget his name we just suggested him michael shannon uh, and then Michael Shannon again, but You're with right. a different voice. <laughs> it's just Michael Shannon switches faces with himself. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're the same person. Zod Michael Shannon and uh, and Lives Out Michael Shannon. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just those two. Yep. Yep. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> so we should probably name some more producers. Yeah, here. let's do that. A um, uh, big thank you to Space McNulty. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you to Hiram. Thank you. Woo. Thank you to Oh Great. It's that guy. Mm. Thank you. Mm-mm. Thank you to Nolan Mayton. Thank you very much. Woo. Thank you to Normal Man Andrew McGuire. Thank you. Woo. Thank you to Ozzy. Thank you. Thank you to AJ. Thank you to Tip Drizzle. Mm. And thank you to Frank Lee Amish. Oh, let thank me you jump very in much. here. Yeah. It's, uh, thanks to Burrito Mouth. Thank you. Thank you to Mrs. Voitus. Thank, Thank you. you to the ghost of Dave Thomas. Thank you. Thank you to Aaron Burser. Thank, Thank you. Thank you to David Knife Boot, Henson MBA CPA. Knife Boot. Thank you to Christopher Robert Sparts, Esquire. Thank you. Thank you to Mackenzie Rice, Santa Lizard People, Chill. Thanks. Thank you to Funky J. Thanks. And thank you to Pie Guy. Thank you very much. Okay, Dave. Ah. Cut the shit. Uh, I want you to level with me. Uh, do you have a movie that deserves uh, more hype? I do. I do have one mm. of those. Mm. I got one. Mm. This is out now. This came out a few days ago. Um, I, I had been meaning to talk about this one, and then it jumped up on me. Uh, fucking Sador. 
Mm. Sator. Sator. <laughs> um, this is... Uh, Sator. Sator. This is a... This <laughs> Sorry, it sounds like a He-Man yeah, character. Exactly. Um, Sator. I am Sator. This is a slow, slow burn horror movie. It's getting about like a 90% on Rotten Tomatoes. I just read a, uh, there's a Guardian review and a Variety review. Both really like it. Mm-hmm. Um, this is weird. It's part, it's part like real footage, apparently. What do you, um, what do you mean real footage? From what I can tell... This was written and directed by this one guy, Jordan Graham. He also did so much on the film that it took six years to make because it was only him doing it. Uh, if you look in the credits, he it's pretty much just his name. Uh, and huh. this takes place in a cabin. He also built the cabin. Um, it's about a hunter. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally <laughs> like one guy. Wow. He didn't act in it, though. It's not a Neil Breen sitch. Mm-hmm. Uh He's not the actor in it. It's about a hunter who's in the woods and he he's using the deer cameras, which I don't know if you know mm-hmm. what those are like, but they're always kind of creepy. Uh, and it's apparently there's footage within it, which is apparently the director's actual grandmother, June Peterson, uh, who talks about a su- supernatural being that watches over her. Huh. Uh, and he made the story based around the the idea. It's a woman with dementia, most likely, I assume. Mm-hmm. And the movie is based around that idea, and it's apparently a real a, a metaphor for dementia, and you know, the, the suffering it like being passed on in the family. But it's apparently a really creepy slow burn movie about this guy, this hunter in the woods. Uh, his brother visits him. And they're talking about their their mother or grandmother having the story, and uh, I guess I'm I'm or I'm I'm assuming this fucking creature comes after him, and it's like weird and satanic, mm-hmm. uh, and and it's based off of you know, uh, it's I think it's based off of uh, Irish folklore, uh, and it just looks fucking really really chill, uh, and really creepy. I've heard I like one of the reviews said. Um, I think it's the Guardian one. Put it really well is uh, uh, I've watched dozens of films at home since lockdown, and this is the one. This is one of the few I wish I could have seen in a blacked out cinema. Like I guess it's shot really beautifully. The woods hmm. stuff. Um, you can sort of see it in the trailer. Yeah, it looks. That it's just looks very surprising really to hear pretty. that he like shot it himself because it looks really professional and well, like well shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just this one fucking guy. Let's see. Cinematography. Yep, he did that. He The only thing he didn't do was um, sound department uh, and editorial uh, for editing. Oh, the only thing he didn't do was the trailer. The, the editing and making the trailer. But he's credited for film editing, cinematography, music, uh, yep. producing, obviously. Cabin, directing, cabin writing. building. <clears throat> Caddy, cabin carpenter. builder. Yeah. 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 Um, it's interesting. I'm glad you mentioned that all that story and all the the making of stuff because the trailer just seems like typical demon shit. Like old ladies right. upside yeah, the trailer down people's claws. The, the trailer itself is kind of interesting, but yeah, it does sort I, of yeah. run the risk of looking a lot like every other slow burn right. movie that's come out I of the past I would argue five years. that the trailer is a good trailer, but I think it's mainly because the footage that they're working with looks very I good. I think the trailer it does start really well. In fact, it has a thing, it does um, a thing that I, my favorite trailer of all time does, which uh, it makes a drum beat out of the diegetic sounds of like a chain rattling on the ground or stomping or something. Yeah. And that's a shout out to a serious man, the Coen Brothers trailers. Trailer. Yeah, and trailers do that from trailers do that a lot now, but it's lot. very it's very it's effective. very cool. It's just like a oh, this is like its own like there's something musical about trailers. We always talk about the time where you know it like you know the the beat drops, you know, uh, yeah. the, before mm-hmm. they drop the bass, so to speak, or like yeah. in horror movies, especially the timing of like the scare and then the scare after the scare and the silence in between. Uh, mm-hmm. Knowing about that, it's kind of cool that he, like, the trailer... I like that he was like, I am completely all over this film. I wrote, directed, did all the things. 
Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to give the trailer to someone else. Make some nonsense. Watch my movie, cut it up into a trailer, do some crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that actually shows some pretty cool restraint from this director. So that's, that's another true. thing I like about it, based just off hearing yeah. that. I'm also getting a lot of... I think it's also because... Hmm? Oh, just because post production took apparently six years, so I can also yeah. see him just being like, "Here, to, I'm yeah. just I don't someone do else this. do this." Yeah, yeah, yeah but like that's I've had that same issue uh, pitching, mm-hmm. um, pitching like books and stuff, where it's right. like, "Man, I wish I j- I wish somebody else could write this for me because right. I have no idea how to sell what it is that I've made." I'm getting right. uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, because I've, I'm too close to this shit. I'm exactly, getting real big yeah. apostle and, um, hereditary vibes. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, it's, it's definitely the views are call, uh, talking about the witch, especially yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I, Blair witch project. Right. So just witch stuff Found footage mm-hmm. and then witch, but just woods. the witch Creepy was like forest. a slow burn forest cryptic. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, unsure if it. There's, these are or kind of a dime. A, yeah, these are kind of a dime a dozen now, but this sure. one just stood out because the reviews are positive, and this motherfucker did everything himself. Which again, that is also you know so so did Neil Breen, you know. Yeah. So like that's not a good thing. But if it is good, well, that means. But if that it is good, yeah, he, he's really yeah. good, and also it like, means that yeah. we should support movies like that because yeah, yeah, you know, he's not. He he had to make do, you know. It's, like the, the yeah, exactly. Uh, like the the I mean, I'm sure the the differences are many, but the immediate difference <laughs> you notice between this filmmaker and a guy like Neil Breen is Neil Breen's movies all take place in Las Vegas in the houses he's presumably uh, uh, listing in real estate. All right. And this motherfucker built a cabin out in God's nowhere, <laughs> and it's like yep. this is what I want for my movie. This is my yeah. vision. Yeah, yeah, I feel like he's like a mountain man, like Jeremiah Johnson, who just found a camera <laughs> in the woods and was like, I will use this somehow. <laughs> like, uh, I feel like we're just not, like the camera's just there for a ride. <laughs> this is just his life. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah, great. Yeah, this is just what he That's does. Great. I'm actually yeah. very successful hype because I was walking into this just watching the trailer going like, fine trailer. I like some of it, yep. but pretty run of the mill, but you're elaboration of um you know all of the details behind the film makes me want to watch right. the film considerably more sounds like uh dave yep sounds like dave. is the winner mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah dave wins. yeah no you win Good you win job. buddy you Champion. did it but you know this is ben by the way i've been keeping score with these how many of you hypes. lost you didn't know it was a contest uh, I've I've won them all oh, okay. because so nobody knew it was a game. Champion Dave. Yeah, the other, nah. <laughs> <laughs> I know we've we've looked at at least one movie that was that deserved more hype that turned out to not be good. Yeah. I can't remember which. Well, one you don't it was. know how I'm scoring these. Also, that's true. Just... That's true. I have no idea what metric you're using. <laughs> if <laughs> basically if if this ends with people going, yeah, then I win. Mm-hmm. Like when people are like, yeah, it is. It does deserve. Well, how more about high. this? Good job. How about this for switching the <laughs> switching Very around low the power? Bar. Very low bar. Here. Uh, how about me and Tom take you out in the back and stomp you? Huh? Yeah. Then who's <laughs> winning? How about, how about we stomp your teeth out? <laughs> we'll stomp your teeth sound? out. <laughs> Big winner. Oh man. Well, you you have to fucking you can't because I'll give you it's the pandemic. We can't stop nobody. I'm gonna stomp you. <laughs> Look, I would, I would, I lust for your touch in the pandemic. I mean, but... luckily my legs are six feet long. It's a little, it's a little, mm-hmm. little known fact about me. Yeah, so I'll be able to stomp you. Spider Man, you are very from a tall, responsible yeah. distance. Yeah, I look like the motherfuckers mm. in the uh, beautiful people video. Yeah, and you're real slim. I on the other hand, have in during this time in COVID have gotten very tiny. Like I'm a little piece yeah. now, so I can dodge. I can dodge all of your coughs and wheezes. Yeah. It's a little, little teacup, babe. Mm-hmm. I'm a right. little, little homunculi. It's real fucked up. Mm-hmm. Um, but the real winners are 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 all you guys who just listen. Because guess what? That's a sewed. Whoa! Oh yeah. man, Swish. we did it. Whoosh. Uh, Abe, yeah. thank you so much for being on the show at the last possible minute. Oh yeah, absolutely, <laughs> yeah. man. You're here. Uh, anything yeah. for you guys. You guys are great. Um, 
You want to plug some stuff? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you haven't, you should run on over to Google or whatnot and search for Small Beans Podcast. Uh, we're a small. We're a network. Michael Swaim and I have a bunch of podcasts under that name, uh, uh, amongst others. Big news from us, I guess, is we are doing a Patreon only. Uh, we're writing a movie, and we are Woo! doing and a. It's kind of we're deciding on a movie, and for the next like year or so. We're recording every conversation, breaking it up into like a half, an hour long, and uh, Patreon exclusive uh, podcasts for that are just the recordings of Michael Swam and I's process and pre visualization for a movie. So that's kind of a cool little project. Also, we got um, we're gonna be making another uh, um, like Bean Town, uh, which is Woo! a perfect like a show, like an audio show, like a radio program. Uh, very excited about those two things, and those are in the pipeline. So look forward to that. Woo. Nice. Dave, tell me about what we got going on. We have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Gamefully Unemployed. There's exclusive podcasts on there, like Tom and Jeff Watch Batman, and Fox Mulder is a Maniac. Uh, you can watch movies with us every Friday night. That's a special tier. That is tonight. It is. Uh, when this podcast drops. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's all sorts of cool stuff. So go ahead and check that out. Mm, do it. Mm. Uh, we also have a store at tpublic.com slash store slash Gameplay Unemployed where you can get t-shirts, masks, mugs, stickers, posters, all kinds of stuff. Uh, so head on over there and check that out. Yeah. Do that thing. Why not? What's Why stopping you? Why not? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe s- maybe swap faces with somebody. Mm, old ass oh, faces. God. Swap faces Send us your with faces. Michael Douglas. Uh, kill his wife and then go to our store mm-hmm. with Michael yeah. Douglas's face still on. Mm. Mm. Do all those things. Do all of those things. Yeah. Do not right. go in there. <laughs> <laughs> Do not go in there. <laughs> Sizzling. Sizzling. Ah. <laughs> yes, babe. Yes, babe. Yes, babe. That one's for you and me. Tom. That's just for us. That's an in joke for you. All right. <laughs> Say goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Thanks, everybody. Our music is produced by Chris Corlew. You can follow him on Twitter at at the Corlew, C-O-R-L-E-W, and find more music at shipwreckedsailor.bandcamp.com. Our artwork is produced by Justin Brown. You can follow him on Twitter at at Justin T. Brown, and find more of his artwork at artnessbyjustinbrown.com and justinbrown.info.